John the Banking Systems Engineer and Lesson 47 is more about Muhammad Yunus's micro lending system, an article by Alexander Cockburn pointing out how little actual effect this Nobel Prize winning idea had. AC, a UN development program study in the early 1990s showed that the total microcredits in Bangladesh constituted 0.6% of total credit in the country, hardly a transformation. Against this backdrop, what have microloans achieved? I put the question to P. Sanath, author of Everybody Loves a Good Drought and India's Most Outstanding Journalist on Rural Destitution and the Consequences of Economic Policy. Yes, he said microloans can be a legitimate tool in certain conditions as long as you don't elevate the tool into a gigantic weapon. No one was ever liberated by being placed in debt. And I say at least at 20%. I see. That said, a lot of poor women have eased their lives by using microloans, by passing bank bureaucracies and money lenders. But today, the World Bank and IMF, along with the state-owned and commercial banks, are diving into microfinance. The microloan business is fast becoming a gigantic empire, bringing back into control the very banks and bureaucracies women have been trying to bypass. Microcredit is becoming a macro racket. And I say at 20%, they're wanting to cut of the action to the banks, aren't they? So, Cockburn, Sunnith points out that the interest rates micro-indebted women are paying in India are far higher than commercial bank lending rates. They are paying between 24 and 36% on loans for productive expenditures, while an upper-class person can finance the purchase of a Mercedes at 6 to 8% from the banking system. So, the rich get richer, the poor get poorer, right? And the rich get richer faster, and the poor get poorer faster. And the richest get richer fastest, and the poorest get poorer fastest. It's called reverse Robin Hood. So, the average loan of the Green Bank is 130 bucks in Bangladesh, f lower in India. Now, the basic problem of the poor in both countries is landless less. Lack of assets. And I'm saying assets backing social time currencies is labor, which they do not lack. Cockburn. In the Indian province of Andhra Pradesh, where there are thousands of microloan groups, land costs 100,000 rupees an acre, poor land maybe 60,000 rupees, over $2,000. 130 doesn't buy you the ranch, not even a good cow or buffalo. So how many poor women have escaped the poverty trap in AP? Sanat asks, Try to get an answer. With that 130, the most basic assets do not come to you, Senate says. The amount is tiny. Interest rates are high and the default sanctions savage. So, third world money mart making payday loans to destitute gets Nobel Prize. Cockburn. During recent floods in AP, a freelance journalist came to a village where everything had been washed away. The first people back in were the micro-creditors threatening women, demanding monthly installments from women who'd lost everything. Governments like microloans because they allow them to abdicate their most basic responsibilities to poor citizens. Microloans make the market a god. And I guess their collection department gets a Nobel Prize too. So now, Cockburn, let's suppose USAID or some kindred agency decides to put $10 million into microloans. What used to be an initiative of, of a group of women at the village level has become a high-profile international funding activity. Long before the first rupee is seen by women in the village, NGOs, consultants, bank managers, and their relatives have all taken their cut. But by the time the loan gets to the women in the village, the cost is prohibitive, with the very poor and women of low caste often excluded. On top of this, some revolving fund models require each woman to put in a rupee a day. But often women don't have a rupee a day, so they go to the local money lender to be able to repay the microloan. As Sena says, microlending can be a useful tool, but it should not be romanticized as some sort of transformational activity. On that plane, it's useless. But it got a Nobel Prize, you know. Which is why Unilet's interest-free macro loans is on the Millennium Declaration, and UNU's interest-bearing microloans is not. It's no solution, 
It's just more of the same debt with poorer suckers paying the vig. Cockbird. By contrast, as Bob Pollan stresses, the East Asian tigers like South Korea and Taiwan relied for a generation on massive publicly subsidized credit programs to support manufacturing and exports. They are now approaching the West European living standards. JCT. So even programs of macro loans of anti-social credits have worked better than programs of micro loans of anti-social credits. But none can work as well as macro loans of zero interest free social credits. So, Cockburn, poor countries now need to adapt the East Asian macro credit model to promote not simply exports, but land reform, marketing cooperatives, a functioning infrastructure, and most of all, decent jobs. And I said, well, actually, they need to adopt the Unilex time standard of money, macro social credit model, not adapt the macro anti-social credit model. Cockburn. The trouble with publicly subsidized credit programs is that they're public, they're large, and run contrary to the neoliberal creed. That's why Yunus got his Nobel Prize, whereas radical land reformers get a bullet in the back of the head. And I said, true, if Big Brother is giving them a prize, you can bet it's because it helped the masters, not the slaves. Of course, if an economist doing s some small-time good with micro-lending of anti-social credits is worthy of a Nobel Prize for bringing some peace to the world, is it any wonder I predicted 25 years ago that engineering an interest-free, unilets, time-based social currency to restructure the global financial architecture is worthy not only of the very last Nobel Peace Prize once war is successfully defunded, but also the last Nobel Prize for economics once the banking system engineering program is successfully debugged by the miracle Unemployment is equal to I over P plus I equation and a Nobel Prize for science once the 1 over S minus I debt slavery system software is upgraded to the let's 1 over S interest free social currency software worldwide. Yunus is an economist. No wonder he has not seen the vast worldwide social credit solution. If the economist who engineered a micro solution using anti social credits is worth one Nobel, isn't the engineer who engineered a macro solution using social credits worth more? Microcredit may be a means in which to break out of poverty for a few, but I bet more people have been helped by macro loans of social currencies than micro loans of antisocial ones. All of Argentina, for instance, and soon all of Latin America, plus people in 58 countries where community currencies are installed. Microcredit alone is not an overall solution. Unilets is the one elegantly engineered overall solution. It's why Unilets made it to the Millennium Declaration and mini loan sharking did not. I think the worst part of all this is that focusing on mini loan sharking has drawn away interest from real solutions. It's sad that he never thought to use a social currency in conjunction with his cash. Imagine how far she could have gone with a credit line of 10,000 green hours, five green years, to change her life. If even anti-social credit is loan sharked out in dribs is of such benefit in helping destitute people, just contemplate how much getting their true time credit worthiness could have helped which is why the anti-poverty engineer worked to get interest-free unilet social credit, sociable credits to all citizens in abundance, while the anti-poverty economists worked to get interest-bearing anti-sociable credits to citizens in peanut amounts. Anyway, over 25 years ago, on September 18, 1980, the Ottawa Citizen published my boast that my Abolish Interest Rates project would earn me three Nobel Prizes including the last one in peace and the last one in economics. If you knew micro solution had a positive effect on peace, there will be no more need for peace prizes once the complete unilet social currency solution is implemented worldwide. And I'd expect the last economics prize because once it's admitted that my U equals J equals I over P plus I models the flaw in the present system and it's fixed once and for all by making I equals zero, who needs prizes for coming close to solving it? 
I'd expect to share the ongoing science prize with Let's Software co-engineer Michael Linton. So, 25 years after my prediction of a triple Nobel Prize for switching off the debt slavery system by updating the interest-bearing banking system software to the interest-free Let's Banking System software to eliminate the yoke of oppression, it bodes well for my vast, worldwide, zero-interest, unilet solution to poverty's cause if less than a half-vast solution to poverty's symptoms wins top prize. 